Uh, we were, I am Professor Dr. Nezari from Hebel Medical University Peshawar, Pakistan and today we will be teaching you antiterrorite drugs. So my main focus today will be that how antiterrorite drugs works and let you understand the basic concepts. So let us start. Uh, regarding thyroid glands anatomy, you know, uh, it is located or trachea and has two lobes connected together by an asthmus and have an average weight of 15 to 20 grams usually. Uh, some facts about thyroid glands and that is thyroid gland derives from the floor of embryonic pharynx. It begins to develop within four weeks of gestation and thyroid development is largely completed between 10 to 20 weeks of gestation and uh, what important is that the thyroid gland is composed of over million of cluster of follicles. So they are called thyroid follicles. And follicles are spherical consisting of epithelial cells surrounding the central mass, usually that is colloidal in nature and where the hormones are attached with the thyroglobulins that is located inside. It mainly secretes uh, tetra Iodotyroxines or called as simply the thyroxine that is T4 and the triiodotyronine that is called T3. Now, having said that, uh, this is a, a thyroid uh, follicle. This is how you can see in the microscopes. And once once this thyroid follicle is enlarged, so it is having epithelial surroundings as I discussed in the previous in this previous slides. This is a blood capillary, and this is the Parafollicular C and follicular cells, you see, these are some lymphatic vessels and blood vessels and parafollicular cells, etc. So, in a nutshell, it is very evident that there is a blood supply very, very near attached to this, these cells. And if we uh, diagrammatically represent this, so, and what happens, how the iodine rich hair and how T3 and T4 are synthesized here inside the follicles and you see and how they are attached with thyroglobulin. So I have summarized that in the next slides. So but before going into that details you need you, you know that there is uh, this is a concept related to the absorption, distribution, metabolism and elimination of drugs. And let me refresh your general pharmacology as well. So once you take your patient, takes the drugs through the oral routes, it is then absorbed. And absorption happens through, through the, this small intestine, upper portion, as so I have tagged this, event one, absorption, event one, passing through the liver, reaching the blood or general circulation. And from this, it is distributed, so there is distribution. And it's reaching the tissue, and tissues have receptors. So there is a receptors plus drug complex and it gives you the pharmacological response. So this is pharmacodynamics. This pharmacological response is called pharmacodynamics. Whereas this moment of drug, you see, from, from starting through the oral route, per oral route, you see, is absorption, then there is distribution, then there is metabolism in the liver, then there is blood, is, is people diagrammatic, reaching the kidneys, there is GPAR, urine formation and eliminated through the renal route and sometimes it is is hepat interior hepatic circulation here so so it is secreted in bile and, and then it is eliminated by feces so this is this was this light was just to refresh your 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 general concept of general pharmacology so here here you see is movement of drugs from one hair reaching hair distribution metabolism and elimination this is concept is called as pharmacokinetics and this is called as pharmacodynamics, where is the drugs reach the tissues and give you pharmacological response. Now, having said that, what happens to the drugs that uh, you take orally, either orally or, oh, mm, so you see, mostly the antithyroid drugs are given uh, orally. Now, this is blood, this compartment shows you blood. And this compartment show you, rectangle show you, the thyroid follicle. And what happens to these events? So, once your patient takes food, it contains iodine. And once it contains iodine, you see, so iodine 
is absorbed into the general circulation following that mechanism that we did discuss described in the previous slide. Then that iodine is uptaken to the iodide pump and this iodide pump shifts the iodine inside the thyroid follicles, you see. And once it is shifted inside thyroid follicles, so oxidase enzymes are here and these oxidase enzymes now convert this iodide into molecular iodine. This molecular iodine is active and with, uh, with, with, with condensation of tyrosines, so it performs monoiodotyrosines and diiodotyrosines. The name represents diiodotyrosines. It, it contains two iodine molecules and mono means it contains one iodine molecule, which is very interesting. Once that monoiodine, iodide, tyrosines and one diiodose. So two plus one means three. So it will synthesize T3. If there's two diiodotyrosines combined, so it will synthesize T4. So, so T4 and T3 are synthesized. Now they are attached with this thyroglobulins present inside this uh, uh, mesenchyma of these cells, you see. And once body is in need of T3 and T4, so under the action of proteolytic enzymes, this T3 and T4 are released. So what happens? So T3 and T4 are released, but if these are released when the T3 and T4 level are less in the blood. So consequently, what happens? The T3 and T4 level raises inside the blood. And recall your hypothalamus pituitary axis, and you see this is how regulated by the positive and negative feedback mechanisms. Here the thyroid stimulating hormone comes and stimulates this, these. So thyroid stimulating hormones in close uh, combination with T3 and T4. Once the T3 level are less, T4 level are less, so it stimulates the TSH from the interior pituitary and then it is coming here and acting the right follicle and stimulate all these things. Now think about clinical conditions. There may be hypothyroidism when this function is very low and there is hyperthyroidism when the thyroid follicles mean these cells are performing at a high level. So T3 and T4 level will consequently, consequently high in the blood in case of hyperthyroidism. Now these are there are different steps in this in this synthesis and if we control these so it means we can control hyperthyroidism. So one step is here that perchlorates are used and they inhibit the iodide pump and if you inhibit the iodide pump the whole process will be slowed down. But unfortunately it contains uh, perchlorates, thiocyanates and thiocyanates are sometimes converted into cyanides and that may be associated with thyroid uh, with, 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 uh, with toxicity so 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 they are not used clinically you see and the most of the, the good drugs that are used clinically are the thiamides thiamides having sulfur and amide linkage and they will they will inhibit the estrogen so the consequently t3 and t4 level or uh, the condensation of tyrosine with iodine will not happen so and thus Thus the T3 and T4 level will be less and consequently there will be there will be less mm, 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 synthesis of T3 and T4. Now uh, this model is very important, especially uh, your, your patient is suffering from thyroid uh, hyperthyroidism, so whether some some nodules, whether that is uni bilateral or on single side, and the physician uh, diagnose after thyroid scans that there is a particular size of, of thyroid follicles uh, suspected for uh, carcinoma, whether that is neoplastic. So we use this concept as well. Here we give radioactive iodine. So this iodine will be now radioactive iodine 131 and this 131 will follow now this. But you know neoplastic cells are hyperfunction. So the radioactive iodine will concentrate more in, in neoplastic cells and due to emission of beta and gamma radiation, these cells will die. Well, as normal cells where the iodide pump will be a bit uh, with the normal activity, so there is the, the entry of the radioactive iodine into the normal cell will be, will be low. So one should be clinically so much intelligent and the nurse or the accessory straw should be so much intelligent that while administering uh, radioactive iodine, they should they should be quite vigilant about the dilution as well. Um, uh, radioactive material 
repression and dispensing otherwise uh, increase uh, in one drop dose may create problem and your patient may become become hypo hypothyroid so this is how all these events happening at the level of, of uh, you know thyroid drugs profile thyroid cell, cells you see and if i carry you so this constitutes the classification of anti-thyroid drugs so synthesis of thyroxines you see pro, there's a thyroid profile thyroid cell methyl thyroid cell methamazole carbamazole and these drugs are uh, like methamazole carbamazole you see numarcazole available in the market and then the drugs that is going to destroy thyroid tissue and that is that is that is reductive iodine 131 and once in case of hyperthyroidism reductive iodine 131 is going to destroy all cells so the t3 and t4 level uh, will be uh, will be t3 and t4 level will be raised abruptly why because the destruction of hyperthyroid cells will lead to simultaneous release and that can that t4 and can create problem for you because you know T4 is calorogenesis, it increases the heart rate and once increasing the heart rate so you have to give you have to give propranolol or gonitating or anti-adrenergic drugs so anti-adrenergic drugs though they are not anti drugs but they are used for, as for the supportive therapy for the management of possible complication with uh, radioactive therapy or this other anti drug therapy Drugs with uncertain mode of action, that is lesions iodine or strong iodine solution. And, but this is important, especially once you give your patient such sort of therapy and preparing your patient for the surgery, you see. And if there is surgery is needed and you, you have to give lesions iodine solution. But remember, this works as a negative feedback mechanism for initial 10 to 14 days. But after 10 to 14 days, then it will aggravate the case. So if you are preparing, giving your patient a particular diet of surgery and preparing patient for surgery, you see, and for some reasons, your patient is not being ready or, or has not been given a chance of surgery. So then do stop such sort of drugs because that may aggravate your patient's condition because after 14 days, then it will, it will, it will, it will, it will uh, uh, adversely affects the hyperthyroidism. So because it works through the negative feedback mechanism though its mode of action is 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 yet unknown there is an inhibitor of iodide trapping and percolate and thiocyanate which we did discuss in the previous uh, in the previous slides i hope now you understand the basic concepts go and see your uh, classification of drugs and prepare yourselves thank you